lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I've had better days. I'm, <laughs> my allergies are killing me. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the COVID. I can, I can actually taste the difference between those like uh, crappy Welch's or whatever gummy fruit thingies. Those are the good ones. They're not the crappy ones. Well, I mean, there's... <laughs> there's not, there's not a whole lot of nutrition value in them. Oh, is yeah. what I mean. Well, I sp- very, no, I think they taste. They're, they're good. very tasty yeah. though, <laughs> and I can still taste them. And that's the point. My temperature's down and everything. So, yeah. um, so you're not going to infect me. You're n- this isn't fixing to turn into a super spreader event. Yeah. Well, I'm probably less likely to infect you in here than a week of sharing a bed with your wife when she had COVID. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm probably the least of your concerns. I'm yeah. still convinced that, um, you know, since uh, since you've had COVID in, in your house a couple of times. Twice now. Mm-hmm, and I've had COVID in my house once, um, at least yeah. And neither of us has ever gotten sick. Yeah, we haven't um, gotten sick. Now, granted, at least in my case, I also haven't been tested. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, and I, I have been tested, and yeah. um, and I was tested for antibodies, too. I didn't have antibodies either. So. Really? So you're just, like, completely immune to this thing. Like, it just, it sees you and runs, man. Yeah, man. I, like, the, you know, what this means, that we're indestructible. It, it, it would certainly indicate, it would certainly seem that way. Indestructible. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I do other things. I um, yeah. high-dose vitamin D uh, regularly, have for years and years. This seems to be a big part of it. Yeah. Um, and whenever I start to feel sick, I take a bunch of vitamin C, too. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but I've had a lot of people push the idea of the ivermectin to me here recently. And yeah. I'm not sure where I'm at on that. Like to me, I think if you get it actually prescribed by a doctor, mm-hmm. I would say go for it. Oh yeah. Um, and there's plenty of doctors that will prescribe it. And there it are to plenty you. of doctors that will prescribe it to you. Came um, up in Biden's speech actually. Did it really? Or maybe it wasn't yeah, Biden's because speech. Somebody was talking about trying to stop them from doing that. I saw an article the other day that they're pushing to have doctors yeah. quit prescribing it to people. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Biden said something about that um, uh, ivermectin uh, prescriptions were way up. Yeah. Yeah, prescriptions from doctors. Yeah. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Now, I, I do kind of have a problem with going to the tractor supply and buying the horse paste. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know that's that, that. Probably not the smart that's way. That's probably do that. not the best route to go. <laughs> well, but they do have the those little packs in India that they were selling and then quit selling and then they've started selling again. Yeah. They're like $3 yeah. um, that have uh, five days of, um, I think it's like five days of ivermectin, five days of uh, some antibiotic. Um, I forget what doxycycline or something like that, and uh, five days of zinc. Oh wow, yeah. And you know, and for a long time, India seemed mostly unaffected by the virus. Yeah. And it was after they stopped selling that that their numbers shot. All of up. a sudden, it shot up. Yeah. And I could, I, I couldn't find the source again. Um, but uh, and I didn't look real hard, honestly. Um, but I could swear um, that I read or heard somewhere that um, some of the uh, like provincial or whatever governments in India were um, were leveling some kind of lawsuit against some group for talking them out of using ivermectin. Really? Yeah. um, That they Hmm. are claiming that them stopping using ivermectin has resulted in a whole bunch of excess deaths. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I could swear that yeah. I that I read or heard Pulled that somewhere. That somewhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean that doesn't seem like something that I would just make up or dream or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, Do a lot of reading, so yeah, <laughs> sure you found it somewhere. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I mean, it does seem, to, and all these claims that there's no evidence that it has any effect are just lies. Yeah, that's just a lie. Yeah. Um, you know, they talk about, well, the, you know, the dangers of meta-analysis, but meta, there's, there's sets of meta-analysis that are based on peer-reviewed studies yeah. um, that definitely suggest that there is some advantage to taking it early or even as a yeah. prophylactic. Yeah, I've talked to quite a few people that are taking it as a prophylactic. Yeah. So, Here, I mean. Here's the danger of ivermectin um, at, prescribed uh, to people um as a, you know, to fight against coronavirus. Uh, The danger is to the pharma companies. 
Yeah. Because it's cheap. Exactly. And now that's and that's exactly the, the point is that they're not making any money off of that. Mm-hmm. And so that can't be what the fix is. Yeah. So you remember they pushed remdesivir over ivermectin. Remdesivir actually killed people. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, and maybe ivermectin has kind of mixed, yeah. um, you know, the, mixed evidence on that. I, I'm sure that my doctor told me that her concern with ivermectin was the dosing, that yeah. in really high doses it can be dangerous. Yeah. Um, so I suspect that there probably have been people that, that uh, OD'd yeah. Not well, OD'd, maybe not the right... Yeah, it but, would be the right term, wouldn't yeah, it? Overdose. Yeah. Take too much. Um, I mean, but it's the same kind of argument that we make about the drug war, right? Yeah. Like, would you rather have people buying heroin at a store where it was measured and it was clean and, and so forth, yeah. um, or guessing at what their dose is by buying it off the street? Yeah. Um, you and would obviously same... be better off with doctors prescribing a set dosage amount to people than for people like going and trying to measure out the right amount of horse applesauce or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because that's really where the problem's been is mm-hmm. apparently the dosages are a little different when you're a horse versus when you're a human. <laughs> when you're a thousand pounds <laughs> instead of 150. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So. Um, well, I don't know. I, I I would say yeah. I would say talk to your doctor about that kind of thing. That's oh, absolutely. there's no sense in in yeah. trying to guess on that on your own. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Um, I mean. I noticed that they didn't really accept monoclonal antibodies as a as a good treatment until after they had FDA approved the um, vaccine. Also, because yeah. remember, you can't use a vaccine under emergency use authorization if they're effective alternative treatments. Ah, uh, yeah. So you yeah. know, can't admit that this works as an effective alternative treatment until yeah. we've approved the uh, the vaccine. Yeah. I guess. <clears throat> So, uh, I mean, I guess, well, we've already, we've, we've already right kind of dived in. So yeah. let's kind of give the little prelude here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the background is that uh, Joe Biden announced yesterday that he was um, instituting a bunch of uh, additional measures from the executive uh, branch to, f- to force vaccinations. No. Um, I mean, that's essentially it, uh, that in order to fight the, the pandemic of the unvaccinated, we got to get those non-compliant people compliant. Exactly. And um, so uh, there's a bunch of new regulations that are coming down from the federal government that regulate how, who businesses engage with, essentially. Yeah. Um, so they're using the uh, the office of uh, safety and no office of safety it's- and health. OSHA, anyway. It's OSHA. I only know yeah. it is OSHA. I'm sure that acronym stands for something. Just don't know what it is. Yeah. Occupational Safety and Health Administration. That's what oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was somewhere along there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so now uh, OSHA will require that businesses um, with greater than 100 employees uh, require vaccinations or regular testing, um, yeah. and there hasn't been um, an explanation, I don't think, of who pays for testing, if... You go that way, yeah. and they're levying fines and so on. Well, the truth is, is the testing is the that that part's almost irrelevant because that's not where the businesses aren't going to choose the testing over the vaccine. It's there's just it's not it's not really feasible, um, at least in many cases. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I can say with the business I work for that that's just not feasible. Um, I will. Uh, I'd like to also point out right at the beginning of this that. Well, no, you know, we'll come back to that. Um, they're, um, so the nursing home staff, he'd already required, uh, let me try and give as much of know, a as background. Of these things. Yeah. Um, nursing home staff, they'd already required that uh, they be vaccinated if they treat Medicare and Medicaid patients, which is like everybody in a nursing home. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and, and because since Medicare and Medicaid is our government programs, um, they feel like they have the right to, or the authority to mandate that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, which I, I don't agree with, but we'll come to back to that too. Cause they've extended that to hospitals, home health care providers and other medical facilities. So they say, um, if you treat Medicare and Medicaid patients, you need to have your, all your employees vaccinated. Yeah. Um, now, what I think would be funny, although this isn't what's going to happen, yeah. what I think would be funny is if um, 
these facilities started using that as an excuse not to accept Medicare and Medicaid patients. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Medicare and Medicaid are the two worst insurance. Uh, to collect on. Right? Yeah, to collect from yeah. around. I, I speak from experience. I used to work at an ambulance company, um, first as an EMT and then in the billing office. And uh, the company that I worked for ended up going bankrupt because there was something like a quarter million dollars in Medicaid uh, bills that we couldn't collect on. Yeah. Um, and they, I assure you, they were legitimate services. Yeah. Uh, and it already started that Medicare and Medicaid would pay less for a service than what the cost of the service was. And so there were already problems with Medicare and Medicaid yeah. um, that made uh, providers reluctant to, um, to provide services for Medicare and Medicaid patients. Uh, but you were kind of required to and, and so forth. And yeah. anyway, um, I think that it would be interesting if this became um, a point where uh, hospitals and I just don't think a big provider like that's yeah. going to do it would say, OK, then, well, we just won't treat Medicare and Medicaid patients anymore. Yeah. Well, I think that, or we don't accept these insurances. I think that this thing's going to wind up unraveling in a different way from all of that anyway, mm -hmm. probably away from the medical care industry. I think that um, I, I, what we're going to end up seeing is this is going to be challenged in court. Oh, yeah. No, the lawsuits are definitely going to start now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's already attorneys drawing up paperwork and, mm -hmm. and, and filing stuff. So, I mean, this, this that's where that's kind of how this is going to end up hashing out. Well, but that's the, the problem with the way that they're doing things, too, because in the meantime, all these um, all these regulations stand. Yeah. Well, and, and the uh, businesses don't know what to do. I mean, that's the advantage of do. doing it by executive order yeah. is because, yeah, it can be challenged in court. But in the meantime, those executive orders stand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, you, you get your way and you can drag out these court cases so long, especially as the federal government, where you have essentially an unlimited, um, mm. money supply because you can just extract it from all of us or print it, yeah. borrow it or whatever. Yeah. Um, which is all different ways of extracting it from us really. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and so you can make these things last so long that it, it becomes irrelevant by the time they're solved. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, no, but we're already doing it this way. It's too late. Yeah. All these people have already lost their jobs or all these people have already complied. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, I think at the end of the day, that's really the, 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 the tool they're trying to access here mm -hmm. is to make more people. They, they know this is going to get thrown out in the end, but how many people can they force to get this vaccine in the meantime? Yeah. Um, and I think that has, that's a large part of what's trying to be done here. Mm -hmm. um, it just And once again, I'll go back to this. I don't understand why it's so important for me to get the vaccine if even once people have the vaccine, they can still transmit the virus. It's for your protection. Yeah, but why the gov nobody cares about me that much, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Like the government does not care about you people to, like that. Like mm -hmm. any of us, like much less me. Like I know they don't care about me that much. <laughs> yeah. Um well, and there's there's a quote that I use on the show a lot that um uh you know, nobody uh wishes to be protected um against himself. Yeah. You know, like you don't want government to protect you from yourself. That's yeah. like nobody wishes to be protected in that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, either in his person or his property, I think is what the quote is. No, no, no man wishes to be protected either in his person or his property against himself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and like we said last week, you know, this is again, like this is a question of bodily autonomy. Yeah. Um, and I, I would hope that people agree like all people agree yeah. that the person who has the greatest moral right to control yourself is yourself. Yeah. 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 Well, and once again, I think I said it last week, but it bears repeating that, you know, it would be a different argument if when you got the vaccine, you absolutely couldn't pass the virus. Yeah. Like, and I, I would still be on the same side of the argument where I'm at now, but at least there would be, an argument to be had there. Yeah. There well, is no argument no. to be had here. It, like, it doesn't matter because the, the unva unvaccinated have become the scapegoat for everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated, even, uh, even though like a quarter of hospitalizations are vaccinated people, but then it becomes the unvaccinated people's fault that the vaccinated people are in the hospital. Yeah. Um, you know, they, uh, because, 
and he even said something like this in his speech. It's like, you know, because people are unvac uh, unvaccinated, unvaccinated people are dying and unvaccinated people are being hospitalized and unvaccinated people are getting sick. And so in order to protect you, the vaccinated, <laughs> we must uh, force the unvaccinated to become vaccinated. Well, no, but you didn't say anything about vaccinated people ending up in the hospital and vaccinated people getting sick and vaccinated people be dying. Yeah. Um, in fact, you've made it a point in the speech of saying that if you're fully vaccinated, you are pretty safe. You're yeah. about as safe as you can be from from the virus. Yeah. But in order to protect you, because that's when the appeal changes, right? Yeah. Because more people are vaccinated than unvaccinated at this point. So you're appealing to to the majority to force the minority to get in line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and it's just another one of those ways that they divide us and and move us against each other. Yeah. Um you know, uh race, gender, all of these things, um you know, religion and uh political affiliation and all of these things that they hype up to be the reasons that you should hate each other, that yeah. we should hate each other. Yeah. Are all a distraction to keep us from from focusing our energy and our anger on the people that deserve it, which is these people up at the top that are trying to rule our lives in every way, including yeah. how we maintain our own health. Yeah. Well, at this point, I mean, that's, that's the, I guess that's really the ultimate control though. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's not a whole lot else. Like once the government can control your health, uh, the war's over. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, they, they pretty well got you. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the, you know, some of the interesting things that are going on in this is that the media is presenting this as the um, Fed is, is finally requiring businesses to provide time off for vaccinations. Yeah. That's the way the, the, that's like the headlines and so forth. Oh, you yeah. know, federal government requires your boss give you time off to get vaccinated. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. The yeah. real headline is that, um, the fed, the federal government is requiring your business to penalize you if you don't get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or to terminate you. <laughs> or terminate you. Yeah. yeah. Well, which is a penalty of its own. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the FDA approval of the, the, um, the Pfizer vaccine, yeah. uh, which we never talked about. And I, so yeah. now's a good opportunity, I suppose, cause I certainly have strong feelings about that. Yeah. And what I would suggest is that the FDA approval was explicitly a political move, not a scientific move. Oh, it has to be. Um, and they keep talking about it that way, which is, which is the crazy <laughs> thing about it. It's like, the it's so secret. obvious. Yeah. yeah, it's so obvious that what they keep saying is, well, a lot of people were refusing to get vaccinated because they said it's not FDA approved. So we approved it. <laughs> yeah i mean even, that's, the, that's, even though we haven't done any of the stuff we would normally do for a vaccine yeah even though this has been in studies for a quarter of the time a vaccine usually is in studies for before yeah. it's approved exactly um, oh and by the way we did go on and vaccinate the control group you know just, just so you can't check in the future yeah or, yeah exactly yeah. um yeah, so we have become the control group. Exactly. The the people that are refusing to get vaccinated. Yeah. And I, I do think that there is some concern um, in the long term that if there is any kind of control group, even if it wasn't originally part of the study, even if it's just yeah. the people that refuse to get vaccinated, yeah. um, as long as there's a group that they can compare the vaccinated and the unvaccinated sometime in the future, they are worried that something will be obviously wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think that at the end of the day, I think that's the where, the reason. So because we've asked the question a lot, like, why is there this big push? Like, there's <laughs> there's never been a full court press of the media, the government and everything for something to this level. And I think that's why. Yeah, I think it's a lot more banal than that, actually. Yeah. Um, I think that the well, although I guess that's this would play a part in it. But um, I, I really think that the reason that there's been such a press to do this is just money. Yeah. It's, yeah, well, it's just money. It's just yeah. money that the the media, like almost every commercial in media is from Big Pharma. Yeah. Um, and those that aren't are part of the uh, military industrial complex, right? So, yeah. Well, um, that and Chevy Truck Month. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> You're always going to have Chevy Truck Month. <laughs> sure. Is it every month? God. It feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, almost all uh, advertisers for um, news programs are pharma companies. Yep. Uh, pharma companies are huge lobbyists. Um, and there's a ton of money. There's a tremendous amount of money to be made. And what better way to make sure that your product is sold than to have it government mandated? Yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, and considering that the government paid for it anyway. <laughs> well, and so, and that's another thing. And we can probably shift a little bit on this. I'm, I'm trying to keep this episode short because if I, like, I've had a sore throat for days now. Like, yeah. if I talk to Talking much, is just, difficult. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, before I'm... Before I really sound bad by the end of this podcast, <laughs> try and keep it short today. Um, and you know, uh, but this is a this is a good time to pivot because uh, I think that that that's really what it's all about is the you know is just this money making thing, and we see it with COVID, and it, you know, part of it is just the, the whole shock doctrine idea. Yeah. All right, you take advantage of these situations. Um, we're we're coming up on the anniversary of nine eleven. You remember 9-11 became the excuse to start stripping rights away. Yep. Yeah. Um, you had the Patriot Act, later the Freedom Act. It's all the same thing. It sounds really nice, but what it's really about is making sure that you can no longer um, hide behind hide behind the Constitution. Yeah. And, and they were pretty, even um, after 9-11, there was that that term was used a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's being used now, too. Mm -hmm. So it... But it's funny. Anytime you hear somebody saying that, they're trying to take your rights away. Yeah. Like, bottom line. Well, like, and Biden said over and over again in his speech, you know, my job is to protect Americans. No, no, that's not the oath that you take. The oath yeah. you take is to protect and defend the Constitution. Yeah. The Constitution protects Americans by protecting their rights to make their own decisions about their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I, what this country was founded on. Yeah. Originally, I was we had planned to just talk about the fourth and fifth amendments, which are there to protect your right to privacy and protect your right to property. Yeah. Um, and both of these, both of these have been stripped away. Yeah. Um, repeatedly over and over and over again. Right. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, legislation becomes a way to get around the constitution. Um, and, uh, and emergencies of various kinds become excuses to ignore your rights. Yeah. Um, you think about Schwarzenegger just a couple of weeks ago, he says, uh, I don't care about your rights, yeah. um, or whatever he said. It was something along those something lines. Something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should, that is actually your responsibility as a government official. I mean, he's yeah. not anymore, but, but he was, uh, yeah. I mean, this is coming um, from someone who was a government official. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and Biden's job isn't to protect us. It's to yeah. protect our rights rights, yeah. um, our natural rights, our God-given rights, our, our rights for that exist because, because of bodily autonomy, because we own ourselves. Yeah. Um, all of these rights extend from that idea, and they're taking away just that base idea that you own yourself, yeah. and you've become property of the government, yeah. or the leadership, or you know, however you want to term it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, the, the attacks on 9-11... Um, which you're, I'm sure you're going to hear a bunch about over the weekend. Yep. Um, and what they're going to do is they're going to um, they're going to forget to tell you about what happened for the decade before these people attacked on 9/11. Yeah. Now I'm not excusing the 9/11 terrorists certainly. Oh wow. Well, so right. I'm just saying it out there because I know somebody yeah, because will somebody misinterpret. Will say, yeah. But they didn't attack us because of our freedoms. They attacked us because we'd been bombing Iraq for a decade. Yeah. Um, that we had been propping up governments in Saudi Arabia and in Egypt, because yeah. the attackers were Saudis and, and Egyptians. That yeah. we'd been propping up brutal dictatorships in Saudi Arabia and Egypt yeah. that were oppressing these people. Yeah. That's why they attacked. Yeah. They attacked because they wanted us to leave them alone. This attack was blowback. Yeah. I mean, it, in its most pure form, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and, and it was, and it, and honestly it worked like, I mean, they got what, I mean, they are, we lost our freedoms over them mm -hmm. attacking us. Yeah. So even if they were attacking us because of our freedom, yeah. which isn't true, but yeah. if that were true, they got their way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you bought into the whole t thing at the time of, you know, mm -hmm. they're, t they hate us cause our freedom. Yeah. Well, well then, we don't have then, it anymore. Then the flip side of that would have been to have been more free. Yeah. <laughs> like if we want to fight back against them, that would have been the way to have fought back. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, to talk about how extensive this is and, and how much very little can get you um, with government power the way it is. And of course, you know, like Ray McGovern talks about it, uh, talks about the Mickey mat now. It's no longer just the military industrial complex as far as he's concerned. Yeah. Um, he talks about the uh, military industrial corporate uh, intelligence media academia think tank complex like all of these <laughs> groups are working together to promote each other's um 
profit. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and you know, you think about well, what does academia have to do with it? Academia gets a tremendous amount of of money from the government. Oh yeah. They are supported by supporting the government. Like the job of of intellectuals in cultures throughout history has been to justify the rulership intellectually in some yeah. way. Like this is why they are allowed to have power over you. And mm-hmm. there are kickbacks for that job. Yeah. Um, but I thought I would try and do it in a more, um, in a more concrete manner. So I took uh, some of the big, uh, well, let's look at it like this. Uh, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks about um, how suddenly the media has turned on Joe Biden. Yeah. Media that had been run, running blocker for Joe Biden since he took office is now, after he's left Afghanistan, um, pointing out his gaffes and his mistakes and talking about how he'd screwed this up so terribly and on and on and on and on. Yeah. And these are things that were taboo as far as I could tell before this. Oh, yeah. Um, like there was no way that the, the mainstream media was attacking Joe Biden except maybe Fox News. Um, and even they were, even then they were softball on it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and now that he's left Afghanistan, they have turned, Mm -hmm. they have turned hard. And, you know, we talked about how, um, some of these big contractors are, uh, you know, have advertisements in media. Uh, and of course the intelligence, um, community, (laughs) whatever (laughs) that means, um, have people placed in media. Openly, um, like yeah. we're not talking about behind the scenes, behind the curtain in the smoky room or something. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're former openly former CIA guy, former yeah. uh, DIA guy, former. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just and do those people ever actually leave their agencies? Eh, it's, it's Some questions there, at the least. Um, so, but I, I thought that I, I would try and you know give some concrete examples here um, about how people have have profited off of these wars and why they might want them to continue. Yeah. Um, And so I I took some big contractors, uh, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, uh, General Dynamics, Raytheon, Boeing. All right. And I just started looking through the just fiscal year 2020, um, what kind of expenditures they had on lobbying and so forth and what kind of revenues they generated. Yeah. All right. So you want to hear this? Let's do this. This is, yeah, (laughs) <laughs> this is maddening, yeah. um, actually. So, uh, and I can go in one one by one or just kind of give you an average. Um, those groups spent between 11 and $13 million a piece, like averaging about $12 million a piece in fiscal year 2020 on lobbying. Okay. Um, they uh, made contributions to political campaigns between four and a half and seven and a half million dollars uh, most of them were around six. Okay. All right. Um, so six million dollars and twelve million dollars. Uh, six six million dollars on campaign contributions, twelve million dollars in lobbying. Spent about eighteen million dollars on the average between them. Okay. Um, for uh, to pay off your congressman. Yeah. And whoever. Yeah. Um, revenue. Of course, there's a much wider spread in revenue. Um, the revenues these companies generated was between thirty six point eight. And sixty-five point four billion, bu- 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 billion dollars, <laughs> um, with uh, gross profits of between. Um, it, and I'm leaving out Boeing out of this last one. And we'll talk a little bit more about why. Okay. Um, but uh, with gross profits between six point three billion and eight point six five billion. That's insane. All right. So, and, and the average was roughly seven billion. Yeah. Okay. So they they spent less than twenty million and made more than seven billion. <laughs> that's a, that's absolutely right. insane. So, so they got five hundred dollars for every dollar they spent. I wish I got five hundred dollars for every dollar that I ended up sending yeah. to the federal government. Right. Um, and uh, so if you have some questions about this, then I was like, okay, so how much of these? Because I tried to pick groups that I knew most of their business came from government, except yeah. for Boeing. Yeah. Again, Boeing has a major private um, area portion of their yeah of their business. Yeah. Um, but Northrop Grumman and this was these are, <laughs> these figures were a little harder to find, by the way. Yeah. Um, 
Northrop Grumman was the tops. Roughly 90% of their revenue is generated through government contracts. Yeah. All right. Um, the rest of them were 67, 70%. Yeah. Except for Boeing, which was about 30%. Yeah. Um, so why is Boeing a special case? Boeing is a special case because they have a major, like a big part of their business is private uh, airplane sales. Yeah. Right. Um, and they, while they did generate $58 billion in revenue, um, after spending twelve and a half million on lobbying and seven and a half million in contributions, uh, their gross profit for twenty twenty um, was minus five and a half uh, billion dollars. They lost a ton of money in twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, they lost a bunch of money in twenty nineteen. Well, they didn't lose money in twenty nineteen, but their their profits were way down in twenty nineteen. Yeah. This is because of COVID. Yeah. Um, well, didn't they have that airplane though? They had issues with in twenty nineteen. Yeah, the uh, seven thirty seven Max. Yeah, the Max. Yeah. 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 Um, so that, yeah, that was obviously a problem for them too. So their losses are probably in their private and on the private side of the business. Yeah. Um, I did go ahead and look back into 2018, um, you know, before COVID and, uh, and actually the 737 max stuff had already come up in 2018. Had it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they still made nearly $20 billion in gross profit in 2018. <laughs> and that was up from 2017. That's that's insanity. All right, so they're they're not. It's not like they're not a part of this. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And uh, and then I, I somebody suggested to me that I look up BlackRock. Yeah. Um, which I did. They're hard to compare in this because they're not they're not a contractor in the same way. They're not like yeah. building things not, for the government. Yeah. yeah. Um, or providing they're, they're supplies. Not, they're not creating jobs. Well, they're they're doing financial management essentially for the government. Yeah. They're yeah. you know uh, it's like resource management essentially for the government. Yeah. Um. So their revenues and their profits are identical. Like there's no cost of business. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, yeah, <right>. it's <laughs> like it was a little weird and hard to to uh, to quantify in the same way. Yeah. And I, I couldn't get any kind of idea of what percentage of their uh, the total assets that they manage are government assets. Yeah. Um, but they are deeply entwined in governments because they handle all of these uh, 401ks and pension plans and all kinds of stuff. Oh. I mean, whole lot of government stuff. And of course, they, they are also handling the money for these infrastructure plans um, it, that are a result of our foreign policy. Like when we're rebuilding Iraq and Afghanistan, they're handling a lot of this money gotcha. um, that's being funneled over there. But I couldn't tell you a percentage. I mean, yeah. I, I just couldn't figure it out. Um, but just to, just to add another business type to this, yeah. um, they spent about uh, $1.8 million in lobbying and $1.8 million in campaign contributions, and their revenue and profit was $16.2 billion last year. That's, I mean, that's just insanity <clears throat> that you can spend that much money and, but what the thing is, is they're spending that money and just buying control of the government mm -hmm. that you could can buy control of the government that cheap. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, you know, all these government agents, they are cheap. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard some crazy stories about, uh, um, I, I think this came from Scott Horton. I can't remember the figures exactly, but it was something like, you know, related to Yemen or someplace like that, yeah. um, where, uh, a, um, a congressman flipped his vote for $1,500 for $1,500. <laughs> I will approve genocide. Yeah. Yeah. $1,500. Good night, man. Um, and yeah, this is kind of unreal. And the way, the odd thing to, to, to think about it in this is because, None of this money that they are being uh, that they're generating through uh, government contracts yeah. is government money. It's all your money. Oh, Remember yeah. that the government doesn't have any money of its own. Yeah. It only has money that it can take from you. And so what's happening here essentially is that you're paying the government to pay them to pay the government to pay them. <laughs> It's insanity, man. <laughs> yeah, it's your money that's getting it's cycled back in into the system insane loop <laughs> to go back out to these private industries yeah. and the more they can convince the government to spend on them yeah the more the government has to extract from you yeah right <laughs> i don't want to hear anybody talk about roads <laughs> <laughs> and and this is money that could be more productive if it was in the private economy oh absolutely you know, um we talk about like how much the government spends and and Early in American history, uh, the government limits were something like 1% to 2% of gross domestic product. 
Yeah. Uh, it's something like 40% now. Yeah. Um, and all of that money essentially is money that could be used within the private uh, economy, b- within yeah. the private market to do things that were productive that people needed. You, and instead, it's being bought by these companies. To blow up in other countries. Yeah, to blow up halfway around the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just think about like a stimulus plan. Like you, you talk about wanting to have money for stimulus. Mm-hmm. Like if you just injected all of that money back into the actual... Yeah. economy. I mean, wouldn't it be sweet if if Biden was talking about, you know, the stimulus plans and the rebuild America and blah blah blah. Right. And what he was saying is, "Hey, you know, we've been spending a trillion dollars a year uh, in the Middle East and we're going to take that trillion dollars a year and put it into uh into rebuilding America." But yeah. That's not what they're doing. They're not changing the amount of money that they're sending into the the defense department. No, absolutely not. They're just making more. Which, by the way, I hate that term, defense department. It needs yeah. to be offense department. Yeah. Well, it used to be the <laughs> it used to be the war department. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they changed it to the defense department. Yeah. And because it, you know, it, it just sounds. It nice. sounds. Yeah. Exactly. That gets people on board. But when you start talking about the offense department, yeah. Eh, eh, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Well, and, and that's certainly what it is. And what they're doing now is they're trying to redirect this money into um, being antagonistic with China and Russia instead. Yeah. And that's um, that's the big fear is that, that we're in the pivot here. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, I don't, I don't know, know what else to say. I just get frustrated when I start talking about this too much. I, um, yeah. you know, but I, I think that there are clear parallels here yeah. um, between 9-11 and COVID. Yeah. Uh, Oh, there's there absolutely is, especially when you get into like the Patriot Act and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I mean, it all goes back to control. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I should have done um, is that after I looked up all this stuff for these defense contractors, I should have looked up the same information for Moderna and Pfizer and uh, well, Merck and whoever. I'll make a prediction know? for you: you're going to end up with there'll be different numbers, but mm-hmm. the proportions will be about the same. Yeah, probably. I mean, that would be my prediction. Yeah. Um, um, actually, I bet that the, <laughs> I, I would bet that the, um, the pharma companies, uh, get more on the dollar. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they may. I mean, it's, uh, it wouldn't, it would not surprise me. Yeah. Um, they're hugely profitable and they control so much more than just, um, just these contracts coming out because, yeah. uh, they have such a strong lobby about how insurance works. And, oh yeah. Cause they're um, so entwined with all of that uh, end of it. Yeah. yeah you're probably right. Um, so that's, that's really what I think that this is all about. It's, it's all about, uh, privatizing public funds because these, these vaccines, they're not free. The government's paying for every single one of them. Oh, absolutely. Um, which means you're paying for every single one of them. Yep. So you may as well get your dollar's worth and go get that vaccine, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not really the message that I'm getting <laughs> out, but you know. <laughs> well, I, you know, don't you know sarcasm when you Oh, man, I don't know, um, man. That may be a show title right there. Go get your vaccine now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll get more widely distributed if we give it. <laughs> if we we'll, we'll end up on the front page of YouTube or something. Right, yeah. Oh, instead, these guys, man, they inst- know. Instead of deleted. <laughs> instead of deleted, exactly. So. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't have a whole lot more to say about this. I, I think, you know, except that I think that the parallels are very clear that um, in each case, there's some kind of, uh, you know, nebulous enemy um, that the government has to take away your rights to protect you from this nebulous enemy. Yeah, um, a and unique they can spend, evil. Yeah, and they it's can always spend a unique evil. Who knows how many years and how many dollars fighting against this? Yeah. Like, well, you You've said it before. We'll never be rid of coronavirus. I mean, yeah. coronavirus is going to be around. Yeah. Um, it's with us forever. And then you top it off with, uh, did you read any of the Intercept article about the um, about the uh, funding of uh, gain-of-function research in, at Wuhan? I have not. Oh, well. So I've heard, I've heard it mentioned, but I've, I've been extremely busy. Yeah. Um, now, there, you don't know for sure that Fauci was aware um, although it seems really hard to imagine that he wasn't based on the amount of attention that it, it got at the yeah. NIAID yeah. Um, and the NIH. Um, and, you know, one of the big things to, to realize is that they, they gave this money out through proxies, yeah. um, essentially. So the government gives it to 
uh, this organization that then gives it to uh, several different organizations that then give it to the Wuhan lab. You know, I mean, yeah, that's how this exactly. thing works. Yeah. And they can separate themselves from it and say that, well, we didn't, we weren't aware of what they were doing. Plausible deniability. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the the fact of the matter is there definitely was gain and function research going on there. I mean, yeah. there are people that argued that, that what was going on wasn't gain of function. Yeah. Um, but it just seems like such a stretch. Yeah. I, I don't know how any honest person could look at, um, well, we, uh, were making changes to a virus to see if we could get it to spread better, yeah. but that's not gain of function. <laughs> I mean, and some of it, it's like, well, it didn't, it didn't work in vitro. So when we were doing cell tests and labs, it didn't seem to be spreading faster. So it wasn't gain of function. Well, what were you trying to do? Yeah. Right. right? It's, still, yeah. it's like, if it fails, it's not gain of function. It's only gain of function if it succeeds. Yeah. Right. Well, either way it's dangerous, right? Like the, right. these yeah. things are unpredictable. You can't know for sure. But then there was also plenty of evidence that it had become more virulent yeah. Um, because they had, you know, they were citing these studies where they had made these changes to this coronavirus, to this bat coronavirus, um, and, uh, and that it was reproducing, um, incredibly fast in the, uh, humanized mice, yeah. um, that they had, that they had genetically breeded to have, uh, respiratory systems more human-like. Um, yeah. and so then they're, you know, giving them this virus and then it's reproducing much faster in their lungs and, um, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. Um, and that information was going to the NIH and Fauci has said in the past that he likes the idea of gain of function research. And when it was made illegal in, in 2014 in the U S they just shipped it off somewhere else. Yeah. They didn't stop doing it. They just took it out of the country. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And put a couple steps in between so that they could deny that they had anything, any knowledge yeah. of it. Yeah. But I don't, to me, there's really no doubt yeah. that they, that, the gain of function research was a known and intended product of U S taxpayer money, um, that was being sent over there for that purpose. Yeah. No, there's, I mean, there's no um, doubt among other mind. purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Not exclusively, but this was part of, but it. this was part of it. Yeah. And then there's even, there's some things in there just, you know, just to stretch your mind a little bit where they say, well, it wasn't gain of function research because, um, you know, bat coronaviruses aren't known to infect humans hmm. when that's just an outright lie. Yeah. Um, I mean, the MERS was supposed to have come from a bat. Yeah. And the reason that they were doing this research is because they thought, well, maybe these bat coronaviruses could be transferred to humans and let's see how yeah. and what would happen if it was. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so I don't know. Um, the point is of all of this is just don't trust your government. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're not they're not there for you. They're not trying to help you out. They're not trying to protect you. They don't care about your safety. Mm. What they're concerned about, I would say, is lining their own pocketbooks. Yeah. Um they're getting it through lobbying, they're getting it through campaign contributions, they're getting it through various kickbacks, they're getting it through uh purchasing stocks that they know will go up because they're going to require a product of that company's, you know, to to be given to everybody, you know. Yeah. This it is a really common theme that people enter government, actually most people that enter government, enter government rich. Yeah. But those that don't, they leave rich. Oh, absolutely. And it's not because they were making a bunch of money <laughs> yeah. from, yeah. Yeah, as their salary for being yeah, in government. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So. The only other thing I had to say is, kind of going back to this new mandate, mm -hmm. um, just real quick, is like, and, and this is the case for me, and I think it needs to be for everybody. This needs to be a line in the sand moment. Yeah. Um, like, I think that, I think he's overplayed his hand here mm -hmm. and that, that he's went too far, and we need to make sure that he has overplayed his hand and went too far. Yeah. So even people, I would say even people who's gotten the vaccine need to, to just refuse to tell your employer one way or the other. Yeah. Like we all need to just stand at least you never get everybody, but as many of us that are freedom loving people need mm -hmm. to stand up and be like, no, this is not information that yeah, you're allowed to have. Business. This yeah. is not, this is and and just not say one way or the other Yeah, and, and let them fire you. That's the other big thing is mm -hmm. don't just leave your, so if your job's going to require you to do this, mm -hmm. just leave your job. 
make them fire you. Well, I imagine there's going to be some kind of rule in there that if you are terminated because you refuse to get the vaccine, that you're not eligible for any kind of government no, benefits. No, but down the line, there may be um, lawsuits available mm -hmm. for people who were terminated for this. And, and just to prove a point, just to prove that, no, I am absolutely not going to do this. Yeah. Like, um, one way or the other. Tell you one way or the other what mm -hmm. I've done medically. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I do want to... This is a word that's been thrown around a lot over the last five years, I guess, now. Yeah. Um, is the word fascist. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and the fascist wasn't the president who said... The states can make their own decisions about how to handle this. Yeah. The president who said, I am going to intervene in private business and force them through coercive power of government to do things the way I think they should be done. That is fascism to a T. Yeah. Fascism is um, government control of privately owned businesses. Yeah. And there's no more obvious example than this. Isn't, wasn't that a Mussolini quote? Isn't that how he defined? I saw a quote oh, yesterday. I don't know. Yesterday that that was that, that that was how he defined fascism was the was the the use of government to control private business, and he was saying it in a in a positive. Well, like I mean, yeah. he was a fascist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I don't at know. least I mean, at least he was is. open about it. Yeah. Like I mean, that, that's what it is economically. I, I had a friend asking me um, the other day, uh, "What's the difference between authoritarian and fascist?" Yeah, um, and I said, "Well, it's it's describing two different aspects of the government, yeah. um, but uh, the one leads to the other. Yeah. Um, that you can't the have the outcome is still the yeah, same. Um, in order to maintain a fascist or communist government or socialist government, yeah. um, authoritarianism is a ne is a necessity." Uh, because you have to ensure compliance. Yeah. Um, and that you know, there's just no other way around it. Now, the difference between communism and fascism, really, the only difference is what you call the people that get the money. Yeah. Um, in a communist government, you say it's government, uh, it, it's public control of the means of productions or public ownership of the means of productions and government control. Yeah. And in fascism, it's private ownership of the means of production and government control. Yeah. Um, now, so the so, difference is whether you call the, the people who end up making off like bandits, yeah. um, government employees or entrepreneurs, yeah. that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and, uh, but you know, we've been moving in this direction for a really long time. Yeah. Well, um, I'd say I mean, we, we already have a semi-fascistic yeah. economic system in this country. Yeah. Um, and it just becomes more and more fascistic every day. Yeah. And this is a huge step. Yeah, Huge which is step. which is the reason it can't stand. The mm -hmm. reason we can't. I mean, it's been bad enough that we've crawled as far as we have in this direction, mm -hmm. but this is a leap and bound. Like, and this is this this is a moment in the same way we talked about a few months ago with the vaccine passports. Yeah, that that was a moment to see that they're trying to push this thing as far as they can, mm -hmm. and they're 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 testing the waters here. Um, well, and, and that's another thing in in the speech actually is that he was strongly encouraging um, venues yeah. uh, like entertainment venues to require proof of vaccination um, for entry. Yeah. Um, now, right now, he's strongly encouraging it, and I'm guessing that his attorneys are very actively working in the background to try and come up with some constitutional quote unquote constitutional <laughs> right. way that they can force them to do it too. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's what these, uh, that's what this has become. Um, the constitution is no barrier to government. Uh, what it means to be an attorney in the white house is to find creative ways to work around the constitution. Yeah. And it was, the, which is amazing because that document was strictly written to, 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 to limit, to government. limit the government, yeah. not the, to contain uh, it. Yeah. To restrict it. Exactly. Does none of those things. None of those things. I mean, but the, these attorneys that are back there working on this stuff, these are the same guys that found a way to justify torture, too. Exactly. Well, and and, and they're I, bringing that war back home. So well, <laughs> just and keep there that you in go. mind, too. Yeah, exactly. That's coming on our borders now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that when they were talking about, uh, you know, they're concerned about uh, white supremacists or white separatist organizations and, um, you know, some uh, terrorist activity around the anniversary of 9-11, um, I, I think what they're concerned about is patriots. They are. Oh, there's no question about that. 
Like, There's that that is the concern mm-hmm. is is because there might be people protesting war. Yeah. And we can't have that. And there yeah. might be people protesting the intrusion on their lives. And yeah. we can't have that. Yeah. Those people are now terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. No, the the uh, and I I've said it before, but the war on terror has moved in, within our borders. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, uh, and I mean, that's been the fear for a long time, but it's, against it, American citizens, we should yeah, well, absolutely. Like explicitly point that out. We're not talking yeah. about, um, you know, radical Islamists that are getting inside the country that they're fighting this war against now within no, our no, borders. No. They're fighting against American citizens. They're talking about, well, me and you specifically, and then people that believe the way we believe. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can replay that John Brennan quote. We ought to, you know what? Let's throw that at the end of the show. All right. I think we should do that. Just to remind everyone. Yeah, just to remind everybody of what we're up against here. Well, um, anything else you want to add before no, we... No, that uh, was... I wanted to make sure I kind of got that out of my system. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, good. Well, we ended up uh, running to about our normal time. Yeah. Um, so... And you can still speak, so... And I can still speak. Yeah. I actually feel better now than I did at the beginning of the show. You know, I worked up like apparently adrenaline fights these problems yeah, too or something. Yeah. Um, but uh, so um, follow us uh, everywhere. Um, Facebook. Um, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, like and share. Tell your friends. Comment. You can always email me uh, any information, arguments, um, stuff you want us to talk about, etc. Uh, at michael at the liberty mike.com. Um, and, uh, we have a website too. Oh yeah. Uh, there's the liberty yeah. um, where you can find all kinds of stuff. I need to start separating out, um, some things. Um, be nice to get some articles on that website again. Yeah, I know. I've been really lazy about writing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, like I had a good run going too. I, yeah. uh, I had yeah. some, I had stuff being published at the libertarian Institute and my crowning achievement at antiwar.com. And uh, then I just kind of stopped writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, need to, at some point, things are kind of hectic right now, but... Yeah, get, life is weird. Get, life, life, life is a thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing that you can be relatively sure of yeah. um, is that we'll be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>